Now, when we talk about people, or people say, I'm going to fight this disease, that often means going through difficult medical treatments, sometimes drug treatments that make them sick, sometimes operations that carry risks and difficulties. And that is always true of established treatments, but when people are fighting a, a very difficult disease and trying a new medical treatment as part of a research project, they are especially uh, brave, and it's from one of these people that we'd like to hear now. It's my pleasure to introduce Catherine Cleary to talk about her experience. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like a bit of an imposter here because uh, what I suffered from was not Parkinson's, but depression. And DBS saved my life, basically. So I'd just like to tell you my story tonight. Before I, I became depressed in about 2000, I was a mother of seven, a grandmother, I taught, I was very involved in agri-politics, I was on the central executive of the state national party. My life was pretty good. And then gradually and insidiously, all those things were lost to me. Um, and I became very, very depressed. And I think I really need to talk about what depression is, because people think depression is just being sad. But it's a lot more than that. When I was depressed, I stopped answering the phone. I avoided friends. I avoided family. I had no joy in anything. New babies were born, new grandchildren were born. I avoided nursing them because there was no pleasure in that anymore. My daughter got married and I wanted to be very happy for her. And I felt intellectually happy, but I couldn't feel um, the happiness I was isolated and separated from everyone in my family. Even It was like having a glass wall between them and me. And everything every day was grey. All the joy was gone out of my life. I couldn't share love or laughter or even cry with them. So that's how I was. And I was diagnosed by my GP in Canander, who is a wonderful man, and he sent me to... Um, a clinic in Sydney, and for the next five years, I spent probably four years out of that five in different clinics, having different treatments, all around New South Wales, basically, and even in Melbourne. And then, um, and I tried so many treatments. I had um, every antidepressant known to man. I had lots of CBT, combative behavioural therapy, which, um, I can do very well, but it didn't help me. I had 29 lots of electroconvulsive therapy, which helped me lose my memory, but it didn't actually make me any happier. I had another therapy called transcranial magnetic stimulation, which made me start painting, but I still felt very sad. And then my psychiatrist in Sydney suggested that I should see the team at the Alfred Hospital and Richard Bittar and see if I was suitable to have deep brain stimulation. And I had heard about it for Parkinson's, but I hadn't heard about it for depression. And um, anyway, I read everything I could on the net and went down there and, to cut a long story short, um, in uh, February 2009, I, in the Alfred Hospital, Dr Richard Bittar operated on me and put the probes in the area that controls depression. And it took a long time, and I must say that Dr Bittar talks the whole time, you are conscious, and he talks the whole time that you're under an operation. After six hours, I was getting fairly bored with it, but, <laughs> but that was fine. I was, it wasn't painful. It was just a little bit um, talk. And, um, but I didn't feel any better. They, they said, you know, they start, turned it on and said, do you feel any better? And I said, no, I'm just fed up. <laughs> the lights are too bright and anyway. But then uh, on the 29th of March in that same year, I sat at the um, Alfred Psych Psychiatry Centre in Melbourne and they actually turned my little stimulator on. And when they first turned it on, I found a bit of tingling in my fingers and then um, I, I started feeling, you know, a bit um, 
things started looking brighter and I could hear the sounds around more bright and more clearly. And, um, but I still felt sad and they kept saying, how do you feel? And then I started feeling happier and I thought, is this wishful thinking? You know, am I really feeling happier? Is it just I'm hoping desperately because this is my last shot? But I did feel happier and I said this and then all of a sudden I still felt absolutely dreadful. I just, everything went black, I started crying and I said to Professor Fitzgerald who was turning the thing on, I said, what's the matter, what have you done? And he said, oh, I'm terribly sorry. He said, um, I just switched off the um, stimulator so we could try a few different coefficients. And that's the difference it had made. I had gone from being feeling happier to feeling desperate again. And I realised then that it actually did work. And since then, my life has changed. It, it has been saved. My motivation has returned. My joy in life has returned. My enjoyment of my family and my friends. I've travelled overseas. I've been to Vietnam. I've been to Scotland. I've been to Turkey. I've had a wonderful time. I've joined groups in my community and I'm even learning the ukulele at the moment, which is lots of fun. I've stopped painting. I've lost the skill to do that, but I'm very happy to um, change, exchange happiness for the ability to paint. My battery ran out last year. It was a non-rechargeable one. And I thought, you know, I could tell it was running out because it was flashing and then, and I had an appointment to get a new one put in. But unfortunately, about five days before it was due to be put in, it actually ran out. And I couldn't believe, it was like a switch had gone off. I went back to not being able to answer the phone. It was amazing, the difference. I thought maybe now it could work. But anyway, uh, I had it re returned on. I had uh, re Professor Bittar operated on me and then I had it turned on and I feel great again. Um, but I'd just like to say a few people who really supported me my psychiatrist and my GP who kept, and I think it's so important to have a good GP, whether you've got Parkinson's or uh, depression or whatever, a good GP who never gives up on you, I think is vital. My family, and especially my husband, Pat, who's here tonight, who supported me, and I think it's so important to have a supported family. And my daughter, who's here tonight too. And my five daughters and my two sons and my 23 grandchildren all supported me. <laughs> and they say now it's so great to have mum's, mum, mum is back. Mum, the mum who was there is now back. But most of all, lastly, I'd just like to emphasise a couple of things. The first is that there are so many people living lives in our community of quiet despair, and especially middle-aged women. You know, oh, she's depressed. She needs to get out more. If only she could. There seems to be a lot of emphasis on male depression and youth depression, and they're important. But women who've, who should have years of enjoyment in their lives ahead of them are cruelly robbed of that by depression and it just seems to be, um, they're invisible. They're just suffering silently in our community and they're not acknowledged and I think it's really important that they are. And the second point is that DBS isn't for everyone. Some people get lots of relief from all the other things I mentioned. But DBS is an option that changed my life and it's given me my life back. And it should be an option for many other people, not just me. I was on a trial at the Alfred, um, and I was lucky enough to be on that trial and have the treatment. But there should be an option for so many more people who other things don't work for. And without it, I wouldn't be here today to talk to you today. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. That's a, just a fantastic uh, uh, story. Um, and I'm sh sure you shouldn't feel out of place. We're all interested to hear such an amazing uh, story, uh, and particularly here in the national capital, that how you had to cross a state border to have that uh, treatment from our most populous uh, state uh, to heading south. It's very important with these new treatments that we don't th that we don't get carried away with them, that they're properly regulated in a very sober fashion with lots of checks and balances, that they're done in uh, research protocols initially and then done with limited numbers of people looking at the effects over uh, time. There's been an ignominious history of psychosurgery in the, the, in, uh, around the world, uh, but a lot of that was many decades ago uh, now and using com a completely different approach and, br and uh, what we look back on with scorn now was done, some of those things were done 
improperly at the, by the standards of those times in the 1950s. Uh, DBS is a conservative treatment, whether it's for Parkinson's or essential tremor. In all of these conditions, we are trying to conserve brain function and put an adjustable treatment deep in the brain. It's in the name of the D of DBS. It has to be deep because that's where there is a confluence of pathways. That's where the path, pathways narrow down and you can influence significant functions with a, a very limited localised electrical uh, current which is adjustable, reversible and uh, can be played out over time as you, you described Catherine to try and find the right level for the condition.